Welcome to the IO Express training video. I'm Thad Houston and this is John Thorne. We're the IO Express product managers for AJA. Today we're going to be taking a look at IO Express. Let's talk about what it is first. It's a lightweight, portable, cross-platform input-output device. It's also a great use for file-based workflows, in particular for both monitoring and mastering. Thad's going to be talking about the connectivity in depth. The IO Express has RS-422 for device control, LTC timecode and reference input and output, SDI input and output, HDMI input and output, and analog video output, as well as RCA audio outputs for audio monitoring. It also has a 12 volt XLR battery jack so that you can connect it to a camera battery and use it in the field without having to use the DC power supply. Because the IO Express is codec agnostic, this means that we can work with a wide range of compression schemes, both on the PC and on the Mac platforms. That means Apple ProRes 422, AVC Entra, DVC Pro HD, XD Cam HD, XD Cam HD 422, XD Cam EX, and the other wide variety of codecs available. Now we're about to take a more in-depth look at the way that we can actually operate the IO Express on both the PC and the Mac. IO Express ships with a CD-ROM that contains the driver, firmware updates, manual and release notes. Those items may be out of date because the box product might have been shipped some time ago. So what AJA highly recommends is that users visit the website. So let's go ahead and do that to get a driver for the product. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Safari. And again, it's just www.aja.com. I'm going to go to the support section of the website and I'm going to find the IO Express product and notice I'm in the downloads and I'm going to find the appropriate software to download. Once the downloads complete we can go in and open up the folder where we'll notice that we have the actual package file that's the installer the manual, registration, and release notes for the product. The package is what we'll actually use to run the installer. We'll double click on this. It'll denote that we actually want to install the software. It'll give us information on the installation. Any warnings that are pertinent to the hardware requirements will be listed here. And finally, a software license agreement. It'll ask us to agree to this. Now you'll notice that we have the driver, which will automatically be installed, and the IO Express Easy Setups. Notice that not all of the Easy Setups are actually automatically installed. There's a base set and then additional Easy Setups. If we'd like to install everything, it's as simple as clicking the box next to IO Express Setups, and by default that would select everything. We can also deselect or select according to our own needs for our particular edit system configuration. Then we'll hit Continue choose to do the install. It'll ask for my password. Continue the installation. And in a few short minutes, we'll actually install the driver and the easy setups on our system. When prompted, restart the system. The next thing we'll be looking at are the easy setups inside of Final Cut Pro for the IO Express. Before we take a look at how the IO Express interacts with Final Cut Pro, let's look at some of the unique applications installed with the AJA driver. So inside of our Applications folder, you'll notice that we have the AJA Control Panel application. We'll go ahead and add that to our dock. And then inside of the AJA Utilities folder, there are several applications, of which we're going to choose the AJA Data Rate Calculator, We'll choose the AJA system test and the AJA TV application. We'll go into the AJA control panel application in more detail in a bit. For right now, we'll just launch it. 
and then we'll launch Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro will prompt us for the easy setup we'd like to use. So in this case, we've now installed all the various formats and frame rates that IO Express will support based on the easy setups we selected during the driver installation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and preset this to 1080i 2997 Apple ProRes 422 HQ. And we'll select our hard disk that's connected externally via FireWire 800 as our primary scratch disk and hit OK. Once Final Cut launches, we can arrange these windows in a fashion that allows us to actually be able to see the AGA control panel while we're operating Final Cut Pro. You don't have to do this, but you might find that it's easy when you're first configuring and setting up the product. You'll notice that when Final Cut has control of the application, that the frame buffer format is set to match the Final Cut Pro Easy Setup. A good rule of thumb is that if you go into the control panel, go ahead and set the primary format to match what you're actually editing inside of Final Cut Pro. So in this particular case, 1080i 2997. You'll also notice that if you're confident that you've set things up correctly, and that everything is how you want it to be, you can actually collapse via hitting one of the tab buttons the UI so that it takes up less real estate on your desktop. Then you can rearrange your windows according to your own specific taste. Next, we're simply going to import a file because in many cases, we're file-based media these days. So this particular file could have come from an AJA Key Pro and a Key Pro storage module. We'll go ahead and open up the file. And you'll notice that we can do playback on this file. And it'll go from Final Cut Pro to the AJA IO Express, and then finally to our output video monitor. So we've taken a look at using the IO Express for playback of file-based media. Now let's use the IO Express to ingest from a tape-based VTR. So we'll go over and we'll take a look. You'll notice that we have an incoming signal that's 720p 5994, but when we were last using the IO Express, it was still in 1080i 2997. You'll notice there's a red line between the incoming video and the frame buffer. So what we need to do is actually go into Final Cut Pro and select the appropriate easy setup. So in this case, we're going to select 720p 5994, and we would like to select DVC Pro HD since that's the native tape compression. We'll hit Setup, and you'll notice that the icon goes from being red to blue, and that the line goes straight across so that now the incoming format and the frame buffer match. We'll go ahead and go back, and open up the log and capture window. And we'll begin playback of the tape. And we'll find the appropriate spot on the tape that we want to digitize from. So in this case, I'll set my endpoint. and then my out point, and I'll log the clip. And I could do this again repeatedly for all the clips on the tape that I wanted to batch digitize. In this case, I'll simply do one. Just to go through the process, I'll hit the batch button. It'll select the selected items in the logging bin. It'll use the log clip settings, which are a preset provided by AJA in the capture presets. I'll hit OK. It'll prompt me that I have a clip or clips ready, and I'll hit continue to begin the batch digitize process. Once it's finished with the clip, I'll simply close out of log and capture. And now the clip's available for me so I can load it into my viewer, and I'll actually make an edit on the clip. and I'll add it to my timeline. 
Again, notice that the format of the video matches what I've selected inside of Final Cut Pro. This is because Final Cut Pro takes priority for the control panel. And I can play this material back and output it. IO Express can even be connected to the live output from a camera on set. So in this particular example, we have an HDSDI output. And you'll notice we'll just reframe and zoom in on our image here from the camera. And then what we're going to show is a capture on the edit system via the IO Express. You'll notice inside of the control panel, we can actually see in the timecode tab, the timecode coming from the direct camera feed, the HDSDI with the embedded RP188 timecode value. You'll also notice in our unique AJA VTR Exchange application, which is particularly valuable for on-set applications when using the IO Express, we can also see that embedded timecode value, which is what will be recorded if we capture a QuickTime clip. We'll hit Capture Now. And when we want to stop the recording, we can either hit Escape or the Stop key. And you'll notice that we get a recording with a timecode value that matches what was being fed to us from the camera. So this makes for a very valuable on-set solution for timecode accurate captures from cameras. Next, let's take a look at how we can use the IO Express control panel for various features and functions to configure the IO Express according to our wants and needs.